All of the particle effects that we've worked on so far in the series have been continuously flowing like these. But what if we want to make one that just bursts once, like this one? Well, that's what we're going to work on today. All right, so we've been working on this series where we created a shader that made a particle system. And we've had about 12 episodes so far in the series, and we've created these effects like this waterfall, this fountain, smoke and mist. And all of these effects are effects that are kind of environmental and they're ambient and they just continuously flow or continuously churn. And that's great, but a lot of effects burst one time and then they are gone and that's it, like an explosion, for example. So I made this effect over here and you can see that this effect would be best if it just popped once and then it was done. And uh, our particle system so far hasn't had the ability to do that. So what we're going to do today is add the ability for this effect to just animate one time uh, and explode and have all the particles spawn at once and then that'll be the end of it. So let's take a look at what we need to do in the shader to make this happen. All right, here's the shader that we've created so far. Over the last, oh, I'd say about 12 episodes, we've been working through making this shader that generates a particle system. It does the particle scale and size and movement and rotation and opacity and applies flipbook effects and all of those things. I'll put a link to uh, the playlist down in the description. So if you haven't seen all the episodes, you can go back and catch up. Well, today we're going to be adding the ability to make all of our particles spawn at once. So right now our particles flow at a continuous rate and it's kind of a smooth, steady, continuous flow and spawning and dying of particles. And what we want to do is change our shaders so that we can spawn all the particles at once. So I'm just going to go ahead and open up my blackboard here. And here are all the parameters that we've created for the shader. There are a lot of controls here. I'm going to add a new parameter and I'm going to call this one constant flow. And the constant flow parameter is the one that's going to control whether or not the flow is continuous uh, or, or just happening all at once. So let's open up our graph inspector. And we want to set the default value for constant flow to one because by default, our particle systems are just continuously churning. Um, but we want to have the ability to um, make these things um, just explode all at once. So let's bring in our constant flow parameter here. And lucky for us, what we're about to do is really simple. All we have to do is multiply our constant flow parameter by the value that's coming out of our vertex color. So our particle system stack has a vertex color where each of the particles is a different shade. And we use that to influence the particle's lifetime. So if I just multiply this constant flow value by that particle color, I can control how frequently uh, the particles spawn, whether they spawn all at once or if they spawn a little bit at a time. So let's go ahead and save this and let's switch back to our scene. And so you can see right now our constant flow value is set to one. Let's go ahead and open up our material. And now we can see all of the parameters that we can use to control our material. Well, here's our constant flow value and it's set to one. What happens if I set this to zero? Okay, now you can see all of the particles are spawning at once and then dying, but we're still going in a loop. So how can we fix that? Well, that's pretty easy to fix as well. A couple of episodes back, we added these debug controls here. So we have this checkbox here called debug time and I can just check that. And now I can use this manual time to manually scrub my particle system back and forth. So I can make the particles go in reverse if I want to, or I can make them play forward. And so if I were making an explosion, 
uh, with this particle system, I would set my constant flow to zero. I would turn debug time on. And then this manual time, I would control with a script. So I would use a script that spawns the particle effect, like in, in some kind of in-game event where uh, like a bomb goes off or there's an explosion needed. So I would use a script to spawn this particle effect. And then I would control this material parameter, this manual time with the script so that I could play it back. And then once it got to zero, I could get rid of the mesh. And now I have an explosion effect that just plays back one time, all the particles spawn, and that's it. So pretty simple. And I can even make my particle effects play backwards if I want to. Uh, I can just, um, you know, control this manual time value through scripting and get a particle effect that plays back once. So it's pretty easy, but it's also really powerful because it allows you to change the way that the, um, the particle systems behave. Now, there is one more thing that I want to show you. Let's say that I set my constant flow back to one and I'll turn off debug time. So now I've got this kind of fire effect that's continuously playing. Well, there are some other things that I can do with constant flow as well. If I set my constant flow to 0 0.1 or 0 0.2, for example, now I can create a particle effect that um, the particles don't all spawn at once, but they spawn within the first 20% uh, of the particle's lifetime. So if we go back to debug time again, you can see that all of the particles spawn here at the beginning, and then they fade out here at the end. So if I don't want all the particles at once to spawn at once, but I want them to spawn near the beginning, I can set my constant flow to something other than 0.2, and the particles will spawn at the beginning of the effect, uh, but not all at once. All right, pretty cool. Let's switch over to Unreal, and I'll show you the same thing there. All right, here we are in Unreal, and we're going to do the same thing that we just did in Unity. So right now, all of our particle effects are flowing continuously. And what we want to be able to do is create a particle effect that pops or bursts one time and all the particles spawn at once uh, and then it dies and goes away. So I have a sample particle effect here, an explosion. And in fact, I copied all of the parameters um, that we had in Unity over to Unreal as well. So this explosion should look exactly the same. And right now it's just on loop. And so what we want to do is edit our particle effect shader so that um, the particles can play back one time. So let's switch to our shader. Oh, one thing that I forgot to show in the Unity portion is this is the, the flipbook texture that I'm using. And I'll put a link in the description, but there's a spot on uh, the Unity blog where you can download a bunch of these textures for free. So this is an example of one of those. Uh, I downloaded this texture from uh, the Unity blog website. And yeah, like I said, I'll link that in the description. Okay, so here is the shader that we've been working on for the last 12 episodes or so. And what we're going to do today is actually very simple. Um, right over here, we're defining the lifetime of the particles. So this, uh, the value coming out of this frac node here is the particle lifetime. And in order to calculate that particle lifetime, we have vertex colors. So the mesh that we're using that creates our particles has a different vertex color value in the red channel for each of the individual particle planes. And that way, each particle can have its own properties, its own lifetime. And we use that lifetime value to offset our time so that each particle has offset time based on um, that vertex color value. And so all we need to do if we want all of our particles to play at once is just add a new parameter. So we'll add 
a scalar parameter and we're going to name this one constant flow and we'll give it a default value of one and give it a minimum of zero and a maximum of one. And now we just need to multiply this constant flow value by these vertex colors uh, from our mesh. And so if the vertex colors are multiplied by one, that means they have the same properties they have now and everything's gonna continue and flow beautifully. But if we set our constant flow value to zero, then it's gonna get rid of these vertex colors and there won't be any difference between one particle and the next. They're just all gonna spawn at the same time. And that's the kind of the effect that we're going for. So let's go ahead and save this. And we set our default value to one. So when we switch back to our scene here, you're not gonna see any difference. All of these particle effects are still flowing just like they did before. But on this one, we want to set our material instance so that our constant flow value is zero. So let's go ahead and open up our material instance here. And I'm gonna scroll down here and find our constant flow and I'm gonna set it to a value of zero. And now what you're seeing is all the particles spawn at the same time. So if we wanna turn this into a, an explosion that only plays once, I can turn on our debug time value and then I can set our manual time value and I can just scrub this back and forth. So as I scrub manual time, you can see that it plays back my explosion particle effect um, according to the time that I set. So if I wanna create an explosion, I could create a blueprint with this particle in it. And then when that blueprint is spawned, I can pass in spawn time as the manual time, make it go from zero to one, and then kill that object. And I've got an explosion that spawns, plays back once, and then dies. So this is a pretty simple thing to do. Um, but it's also very effective for effects that you want to spawn in your scene, have a playback once, uh, and then be done. All right, the other thing that we can do is if we turn off manual and debug time, we have our constant flow value set to zero. Well, what is it? And if we set it to one, now this is a continuously uh, flowing, you know, smoothly spawning particles at a constant rate. But the other thing that we can do is turn this value down to something like 0 0.9. And we can also do that for these other effects too, like this waterfall here is smoothly flowing. But if I were to set its constant flow value to something less than one, just like 0 0.9 or something, it would make the particles spawn at something that's just slightly less than a smooth flow rate, which would give it a little bit more interesting movement. So for our explosion, I can make our explosion have, um, have all kinds of different uh, visuals by changing the flow rate. Right now it's half smooth and half all at once. Uh, or I can turn it up to completely smooth or I can make it just a little bit less than smooth. And this allows us to kind of mix things up and add some chaos into the way that the particles are spawning so that there's not a perfectly flowing, you know, every particle spawns at exactly the same rate as all the rest of them. So this constant flow is a really interesting parameter that we can use uh, to get some interesting variety as well as create effects that spawn all the particles at once and then die. All right, I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you have other suggestions for what we might add to our particle system, I'm open to that. I appreciate all of the input that you've given. Uh, thanks for watching everybody and have a great week.